It's Thursday, April 18th. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And on Tuesday, the 16th of April, another Piper PA-46 Malibu suffered an in-flight structural failure while flying through weather, killing the so single pilot on board the aircraft. Let's check it out. I say another Piper PA-46 has suffered an in-flight structural failure because if you look back through the history of fatal accidents of this particular design, there are, are quite a few of them that have suffered in-flight structural failures, but it's not because there's a problem with the airframe. This is a slippery single-engine aircraft, and it's a problem with owner-operators exceeding the design limitations of the aircraft, especially in bad weather. Piper PA-46-350 Malibu Mirage, November 451 Mike Alpha, a 2012 model, only one person on board, one fatality, destroyed near Hartsburg, Missouri, en route while they were attempting to divert due to weather. A Piper PA-46-350 Mirage experienced an in-flight breakup and crash near ha Hartsburg, Missouri when diverting to Columbia Regional Airport. The pilot perished and the aircraft was destroyed. Here's the most damning evidence of an in-flight structural failure, the horizontal tail and elevator sitting in a yard well far away from the rest of the structure of the aircraft. The fuselage and wing center section of the aircraft was located here in the woods and look at that wing separation symmetrically right at that joint right there. Another piece of the aircraft photographed here looks like possibly a wing flap. The FAA registry for November 451 Mike Alpha shows the 2012 model, recip powered by the Lycoming TIO 540 engine, and it looks like this was registered to an LLC, Upward Aviation, and was recently purchased with the certification issue date of January of just this year. Here on aircraft.com, they still have the listing for the aircraft, November 451 Mike Alpha. Looking at the interior instrument panel, looks like it's equipped with all the latest in avionics and autopilot technology. Looking at the ADSB data on ADSB Exchange, the data stops right here at 141 knots and 16,200 feet. Now, if we look over and look at FlightAware, FlightAware has additional data points. As the flight proceeded along, what appears to be a weather front something happened right here at the end of the flight where the airspeed went right up to a ADSB ground speed of nearly 300 miles per hour with the altitude just plummeting. If we look at the track log, the last couple of data points, the aircraft cruising along with the autopilot on based on the straight lines of that data we just looked at at about 145 150 miles per hour about 142 knots then all of a sudden the airspeed increases correction of ground speed in this data increases indicating a increase in indicated airspeed and the altitude is lost at a rate of nearly 10,000 feet per minute, again indicating an in-flight structural breakup of the aircraft. If we take the data from both of these sources and put them into Google Earth, we can see where the data ends here for um, ADSB Exchange in red, and then we have get a few more data points from Flight Aware showing the in-flight breakup of the aircraft right along the Missouri River. We know this accident happened on the 16th, about 1.30 local time. If we go back to Zoom Earth and look at the weather, this time is in California time on the 16th. and the accident occurred between St. Louis and Kansas City, we can see that right at the time of the accident, that accident aircraft was crossing a major weather front that was passing through the area at a time. Aeronautical decision making. Why do you want to take your new aircraft with all its capability right through a weather front? In fact, this is the same low pressure area that took out the 
jet commander just a few days before here in Southern California that I previously reported on due to the heavy icing conditions. Dangerous springtime weather for small aircraft moving right across the country. What's the most important airspeed that you need to have memorized that's in the book that is not printed on the panel or inside of all of your new latest avionics? That's VA or design maneuvering speed. And here for the uh, Piper PA-46, VA is listed at 135 knots at maximum gross weight. What happens to your maneuvering speed as you decrease your weight? You have only got one pilot on board. Your maneuvering speed decreases. And here a VA minimum at your uh, nearly at your empty weight, 103 knots. So somewhere between 135 knots at max gross weight down to 103 knots at, at your minimum weight is your maneuvering speed. Why is that so important? so that you do not bend or break the aircraft by exceeding the design limitations of the aircraft. The Piper, Malibu, and Mirage series of aircraft are certified as a normal category aircraft, which means their operating G limitations are a positive 3.8 Gs and a negative 1.52 Gs, which is even lower than the limits illustrated in this VG diagram right here. So here's your load factor on the vertical axis going from 0 G's to 1 G and on up. And here's your indicated airspeed in miles per hour in this graph increasing along the horizontal axis. So the VG diagram with this data can describe the normal operating airspeed and G envelope for this aircraft. So you've got your normal 1 G stall speed located right here you need to have at least in this particular graph it shows about 68 miles per hour in order to lift the weight of the aircraft off the ground so normal stall speed starts here and then it as you increase your airspeed you're going to reach your maximum structural cruise speed and then your vne speed over here on the far right you're going to reach your g limits up here along the horizontal horizontal axis along the top of the graph and your negative G limit here on the horizontal axis at this part of the graph. So the point being that anywhere between stall speed and maneuvering speed, you will stall the aircraft before you potentially bend or break the aircraft. So the most important thing you need to do when you get in this turbulence is you need to slow down. You need to slow down to maneuvering speed or even a little bit less because now you're getting in the turbulence, your airspeed's bouncing all around and the aircraft is bouncing all around. And as you're bouncing around, you're, ex you're getting these heavy load factors on the aircraft. And the lighter you are with only one pilot on board, these speeds are gonna be further decreased. Remember, as you increase your weight, you've gotta increase your angle of attack to maintain straight and level flight. As you decrease your weight, you're gonna decrease your angle of attack and you're gonna hit your maneuvering speed and your G limit quicker at a lower airspeed and at a light weight. Because remember, you can stall an aircraft at any indicated airspeed or any attitude, even straight down, but at only one critical angle of attack. And that's what this curve represents here, the critical angle of attack of the wing. Now, by definition, as is so well laid out here on the bold method, maneuvering speed only allows you to move one control, one input all the way to the stop. For example, one elevator control all the way to full aft, or one aileron input all the way to full aileron input. It does not allow for a couplet or a doublet or something called a checked maneuver. It doesn't allow you to bang the controls back and forth. And this is what we found out with the loss of the American Airlines Airbus years ago in the Rockaways over there in New York where a wake turbulence encounter, the co-pilot in that case, did a big doublet on the rudder, which cause structural failure of the rudder of that Airbus. So this brings up the issue of autopilot management in moderate to severe turbulence. This is another situation where you're going to need to turn the autopilot off because the autopilot is going to try very hard to maintain a hard altitude and so it can induce one of these couplet type or checked sort of maneuvers 
in an effort to try to maintain altitude. Once you start getting into such severe turbulence, you need to turn that autopilot off and just accept a block of altitude, get that aircraft slowed down to maneuvering speed or a little bit less, and ride this thing out and ride the ups and downs of the turbulence and <laughs> keep the aircraft upright at all times. What typically happens is you get the autopilot off, the pilot gets a little bit disoriented and then starts a bit of a bank. There goes Mr. Airspeed right through the roof and then coupled with the turbulence or a panic pull or a doublet on the controls. Usually the tail of the aircraft fails first and then the entire airframe begins to disintegrate. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of the importance of design maneuvering speed, autopilot management in bad weather, and aeronautical decision making in even attempting to fly these small, light, single engine or twin engine aircraft, single pilot, through bad weather conditions. Whether icing was a factor in this accident or not is yet to be determined by the NTSB. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.